If a few years ago I told you I was driving a hybrid sports car, you'd probably look at me in confusion. You'd say, hybrid is a Toyota Prius aimed at saving the planet. But then this came along, the BMW i8. It's a hybrid, it's got a petrol engine and an electric motor, but just look at it. It looks like a concept car. It's all sharp lines and LED lights and a futuristic interior. Under all that, there's only a one and a half litre three-cylinder engine from a Mini and the electric motor. That doesn't sound like much, but Combined, they produce more than 360 horsepower. Add that to the £100,000 price tag, and what we've got here is a car that's aimed to go up against the Porsche 911 and the Audi R8. So that electric motor is in the front, powering the front axle. Uh, it's got 130 horsepower, which is about the same as uh, something like a Ford Focus, so a small to medium-sized car. Walking our way along, we've got the battery pack in the middle of the car, low down. Batteries are quite heavy, but in the same way they are with the Tesla, mounting them low down actually brings down the centre of gravity, um, sorts out the weight distribution and helps with the handling of the car. The back of the car we've got the one and a half litre Mini engine. Uh, it's producing a bit more power than it is in any of the Mini range in fact. Uh, here it's doing 230 horsepower. So combined with the electric motor at the front, that gives uh, a total power output of 360 horsepower. But enough of talking about how the car works. Let's get behind the wheel and see how it drives. When fully charged, the electric motor can drive the car for about 15 to 20 miles. Um, we've got it in that mode at the moment, and it's like driving a Tesla or any other electric car. The battery charges through the engine when you're driving along and also through brake um, harvesting, harvesting of brake energy, just like the Tesla does. It's very efficient this car and it's got an electric motor, but it is a 100 grand sports car, so we can flick it across into sport. That gives me manual control of the gears with the paddles, drop it down to second. and it shifts like you'd expect a sport car too. Just shut that up again. Now, it sounds pretty good, I don't know if you heard that through the camera, but it's got a little secret, this car. The sound that it makes isn't entirely genuine. It actually comes through the speakers a little bit inside the cabin. Now, I've been told that it does sound quite good outside as well, but the speakers do add a little bit of volume to the car. You wouldn't notice, to be honest. Um, but once you know it's coming from the speaker, it's hard to convince yourself it's not doing. Um, it's a little bit strange at first, but if it makes the car sound good, it adds to the experience, then I'm all for it. At 1500 kilograms, the i8 certainly isn't light, but the electric motor's instant torque and the low down grunt of that turbocharged mini engine help disguise the weight well. The i8 hits 60 miles an hour in 4.4 seconds and is electronically limited to 155. It pulls strongly in any gear and the brakes are excellent, providing much more feel than any Tesla. Feeling the car gather energy back into the battery while braking is strange at first, especially in sport mode, but you soon learn to work with it. Driving with sport mode switched on charges the batteries in around an hour, but in Eco Pro and Comfort modes it harvests energy much more slowly. You can always plug the i8 in at home, but this isn't always convenient. It comes with a charging cable like any other electric car, so plug that in and then you can plug the other end into a three pin plug in your house or your garage. Unfortunately, that's the only parking space this morning. My house is two doors down the road. It won't reach. Thankfully, the petrol engine in the i8 not only drives the car, but it also recharges the batteries as you drive. So we're gonna go and do that now. The ride is certainly firm, but never uncomfortable. Only when heavy traffic took a 200 mile drive from four hours to six, did I start to wish for softer springs and dampers but only until the roads cleared and I was able to enjoy the i8's beautifully compliant and stable ride once more. It's got all the same controls as you'd expect from a high-end BMW. Uh, iDrive here is where you control pretty much everything with your sat-nav and your uh, stereo and uh, if you've got your phone connected it's very simple to use. Spin the dial, tap on it and you can also draw letters onto the pad um, to write out uh, an address for the sat-nav. It's an automatic, so you can just put it in D and go, and it works like any other automatic car. Or you can shift across to sport, and then you can use the paddles on the back of the steering wheel. As I'm sure you can tell from the looks, it's not the most practical car in the world. Um, if we pop the back, um, what we've got here is a, a very small boot 
it comes with the charging cables and everything you need to plug it in and there's a bit of space for your bag for a bit of shopping that's about it because that's where the engine is taking up most of the space the BMW i8 is a spectacular machine, a £100,000 sports car with the performance of a Porsche 911, yet which does 40 miles per gallon, double that of the Porsche. And what about the downsides? Well, the boot is almost useless, there's very little storage in the cabin, the petrol tank is tiny, and the back seats are even smaller. But it looks like nothing else on the road. It goes like a true sports car, sounds great, at least from the inside, and genuinely feels like it's come from the future. It also comes with a message, the future of the sports car despite pressure for manufacturers to become greener and kinder to the environment, is as bright as ever.